Create that life, legacy designers. Amber Prosia here. Welcome to episode number 31 of the Parenting Biz Podcast, coming to you every Monday. We got our co-host, Ava, the grunter here, so if you hear any snoring, just be forewarned. Um, But of course, that's what this podcast is all about, integration. So let's chat with this week's featured guest, Melanie Taylor. Melanie, are you ready to educate us on your journey of how you crafted the life you've always wanted for yourself and your family? Yes, indeed. Awesome. (laughs) Melanie Taylor is a chief energy officer and author of Success on Purpose. In just four short years, Melanie has helped hundreds of professionals on the verge of burnout discover the easy ways of reclaiming balance and success in life. She is now a highly sought after speaker on this topic. As a palliative care nurse for 20 years and through her own experience of burnout, anxiety, and depression, Melanie learned that it is not sustainable to keep giving out or without receiving. Productivity comes through alignment of strengths, values, and having a clear focus and vision. Melanie has a Bachelor of Applied Science with Health pr- Promotion, a Bachelor of Nursing Specialist certificate in palliative care from Melbourne University and is the winner of the Order of Malta Award with first class honors. Fourth year student of metaphysics with Dr. Rosemary McCallum from Abundant Life Solutions and a University of Life. She's fully qualified. Melanie, (laughs) please take a minute to fill in any gaps from that intro and give us a little glimpse of your own personal life. Beautiful. Thank you, Amber. Thanks so much. Uh, Yeah, I suppose as you can here I do love to learn Uh, that's uh, one of my top values really is growth and contribution so uh, what I learned is that I first had to learn to grow and contribute to myself in order to have the life that I really wanted to live and that has really I really embodied that over the last few years and so now I'm I'm sharing that um, with as many people as I can so that we can really all be living our dreams I think that's the most important thing um, and really be living life rather than existing because so, for you know, so, so long I think I was existing through life as well and um, a lot of people find that and it's really about you know living it to the fullest. Absolutely. Well, Molly, thank you so much. You're incredible and we really appreciate having you here today. So thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. No problem. As you are aware, our listeners are parents or parents-to-be that realize ownership is key to not only to our parenting or business, but in life in general. And along that parenting journey, we can lose sight of that. However, if we focus on life as a game, a sport, or an activity, not only can we learn to let go easier, but we can also gain strength from our mistakes and design our core focus to be one of laughter, joy, and most importantly, having fun. Just like a five-year-old kid in the sandbox. So this week, our entire interview will be back on the footy field getting ready for the game of the season called Learning to Receive. So now you guys are all aware it's just an analogy and we can create and design our lives any way we want. Melanie, this was your chosen sport, so let's go through your daily game and how you make it work with your life and expertise. Right, so do you mean like, (laughs) awesome. Yeah, let's do it. So let's go. So what my day consists of, is that what you mean? I'm sorry, say that again. So what my day consists of? Yeah, we'll go through elements of the game and we'll learn th- um, through your experiences throughout the questions. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go through the first element, which is called the ball magnet, which are players who accumulate a large number of possessions of the ball is said to be a ball magnet. Now, we can all be magnets of the ball, which is a good thing, or of course, we can be magnets of negative things such as stress. Melanie, from your experience working in palliative care, what was one of the main magnets that drew people into those centers? Uh, It was really that lack of ability to receive. And when I say receive, what it means really is to receive love. And that's why I've now developed the workshops around that. And that's my whole philosophy for myself as well, because I was um, someone with a lot of balls <laughs> um, and it was a lot of, I created a lot of stress in my life. And I think that's how we sort of, I, I really got brought up is to be a giver, you know, give, give as much as you can and help a lot of people coming from the country. Uh, and then I became a nurse and you just get to give, give, give and do an, you know, an amazing job. You don't even have to ask anyone for money and you just get to pour your heart out and, and do your best all the time. Uh, but what I found is that I was juggling so many balls and I was exhausted all the time and I would have you know, anxiety, depression, bouts of burnout 
Uh, and it wasn't until I had a significant, um, I broke my wrist actually back in 2010. Uh, and that's the most, the greatest thing that ever happened to me because it was when I actually started to look at my life and where it was at and realized that, um, I was, as I said, I was really just existing through life rather than living it. And I was actually trying too hard as well. Um, and just forgetting about the simplicities, the simplicities of life and just really living in the moment and enjoying it. Um, so I really turned my life around. And then I found that when I was working with these beautiful patients in palliative care, that a lot of them just mentioned how much that they knew that pivotal time in their time in their life when they when they had so much stress that they really feel that that was the driver for for, for them developing the disease and the cancers and things, um, and they also shared about how. Um, that they were, you know, grateful also some for, for the gift of cancer, which also showed them how loved they were. Um, and so it, it has its, you know, it's good and it's bad, but really um, I, my, my big why now is that let's learn how to receive now, let's learn how to receive love so we don't have to learn through these pain points um, and the extremes of life, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty crazy actually because um... – I forget the exact statistic, you might know it off the top of your head, but one of the biggest regrets in people's lives when they're on their deathbed is that they worked too much or they didn't receive in that way. They didn't actually love themselves and do everything that they actually wanted to do. It was like within the top five. Um, I don't know if you've heard that stat before, but it's pretty powerful. Yes, yeah. It's yeah. the five regrets of the dying, yes. Mm. It's, a, it's a huge one. And I've actually seen it at play where um, – People have worked really hard to create, you know, amazing life or create amazing life for their for their children, uh, and then they get to that space in retirement where they've got all of their ducks lined up in a row, and it's like, oh, okay, now we can take a breath. Now we can really cut back and just go and have retirement and enjoy life. And and I've seen it so many times that one partner will actually get sick and die. And then so all of their plans and everything that they've worked so hard for um, are just really up in smoke and they don't get to enjoy all of that life that they, you know, that they, that they really wanted and worked so hard to create. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like depending on how your life has been and individually like as our listeners are listening at the moment, depending on if you've experienced death at a young age. So for myself, I lost six friends in one year when I was 16 turning 17. But the very first friend that I lost, it was a huge, huge impact on me because it was actually a role model of mine. And um, she was only 17. And seeing her parents bury her, you know, it was, it was devastating because, you know, no parent wants to outlive their children. And seeing that, that made me realize as well that life's so short, which then I started fighting the status quo because a lot of people, the status quo is, you know, you go to university after high school, you go to university and then you get a job and then you get married and then you work for 40 years and then you retire, then you go travel. So when I lost my friends, I was like, well, I don't even know if I'll make it that long, you know? And then it was like, well, I don't want to get married. Like, why can't I travel now? You know, I don't need to do it in that proper order. And one of the big things, too, was I actually worked in a nursing home in high school. And a lot of the regrets that they would have and, like, family not coming or would come and, like, how you said about some would have the positive side where they would be grateful to see how loved they were. And that's where I think that we can attract that magnet of that ball going back and forth. We can either attract that positivity or we can attract that negativity. But it really makes a huge difference on how you perceive life and how you actually play out in life as well. How have you gone from your own experience when you broke your wrist? How did you realize to make that flip yourself to see things differently? Uh, look, it was a long journey, Amber. I'm, I'm a bit of a stubborn <laughs> thing. Um, and so I suppose if you want to say the universe was giving me a smack and showing me a lot of signs, but I was very, I was very resistant to receiving. Um, I don't know whether it was was. I was like, oh, I can do this. I've got it all covered. Uh, and I just created time after time after again of resisting the receiving that was there for me. So an example was that initially when I broke my wrist, I went into work the next day and I had a, you know, a bandage on it. I, I broke it through um, 
boxing because I was training <laughs> for a half marathon. Mm-hmm. Um, and the biggest lesson for me, the only reason it really happened in the first place is I was so busy and I was always rushing through life. Um, and it's those preceding events that then I, I created breaking my wrist because it was the morning um, that I actually broke it that evening was that I was cutting up my lunch um, to go to work that day. And as I was cutting up, you know, in a hurry, I cut my finger. And then so I put a Band-Aid on it. And then that night I went off to boxing class. And then because I had this cut, I was actually guarding. So I wasn't really um, punching properly or effectively or safely. And so then I actually, one of the hits, and then I just felt this bit of a pain in my, in my, in my, in my hand. And then I thought, oh, that's a bit sore. But then I just continued with them push-ups, sit-ups and everything and, and went home that night and iced it. And then the next morning I got to work and we had client review. And then all of the, you know, the nurses and the doctors and everyone's coming up to me and they're like, no, what have you done to you? You know, your wrist, it looks a bit swollen there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I just, just sprained it and, you know, it'll be okay and just really resistant to even that the attention from people. I didn't even like that. I'm like, it'll be all right. And then they were at me for ages and like, no, no, I really think you need to go and, you know, get an X-ray. And in the end I said, oh, okay. So then uh, one of the nurses dropped me off because I worked in, in community palliative care. So then she dropped me off at one of the hospitals and then I went into the hospital uh, and it was an emergency department and it was flat out. There's just people everywhere. So then the nurse left me and left me there um, with triage, just waiting. And I was so stubborn that I got up and left. I thought, I'll be here all day. I can't be bothered. (laughs) So then I left. And then I uh, was walking home and I walked past another big emergency department and I looked in and there was no one there. And then I thought, oh, I better go in. I'll never hear the end of it from everybody else so not not for one moment thinking about myself or looking after myself or being kind and compassionate to myself and then when I went in and they x-rayed it and then the radiology um radiologist came out and she just waved at me she goes come on come in here and took me behind the screen and showed me she's like I had a clean break in my scaphoid I was like oh my goodness Mm -hmm. I was you know it was quite a shock but and then all the time I was receiving support. So I received a, um, a, a certificate, a sick certificate for two weeks. Um, I was actually doing a postgrad at the time and I had to go to uni the next two days. Like I couldn't just be sick. So off I went and then I actually ended up going back to work. And I said, oh, I'll be all right. I'll just work in the office. So things just kept happening and I just kept being resistant, resistant to all the support that was there. And then finally I had a massive breakdown because I was doing a postgrad at the time as well. Um, I thought I was going to have an aneurysm. I thought my brain was just going to blow out. I was just so stressed. Um, and then there, thankfully for that massive breakdown, I, I, I had to surrender and I just surrendered and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then everyone was like, oh, good. <laughs> Can we help you now? And I was like, and I remember mum saying, oh, will you come home now and let us look after you? And I said, yes. And it was amazing all the support that came in to really help me. And it wasn't until I was then, I, halfway through the year, I was on uni break and I went to Las Vegas with 30 friends. We did a trip over there for, for one of our friends' 30th. And I just got my plaster off and I was in in the back of the car so we did a road trip and I didn't have to drive but there was two that drove and it was at that time that I was in and out of sort of sleep that it was like my higher self or something was talking to me and these messages were just coming in that I was really mean to myself I was cruel to myself I was resistant to support and and I was sort of really stressing myself out um so it's that that was a then I just started to really look at my life in in a whole different way and I realised how incongruent I was because I was really compassionate and loving to other people but I wasn't to myself at all and I realised that if I keep going down this destructive state then I was certainly going to get sick um, or something, yeah, something was going to happen to me so I started to, yeah, I put it out there to the universe and then and a mentor came into my life then and I started to work on myself and my limiting belief systems and um, I learned to learn to receive and, 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 and I shifted my, my, my measure of success to achieving in self love. And that was a big game changer for me. What do you mean by that? If you could just elaborate at the end, cause all of that was brilliant and you said things so clearly, 
uh, I don't even need to ask any questions about that. I feel like everyone got that. But just at the end there, we switch to achieving and self love. Can you just elaborate on that? Please? Mm. So I'm a. I need to grow, as I said earlier, like growth and contribution are my two top values. But I really had to shift and learn to use those values in the positive of achieving in a state of serving myself because I was so good at serving everybody else. But I really needed to fill up my tank so that I could keep keep serving people because the way I was going, my tank was totally depleting and my top strength also is achiever so I was a massive achiever in in you know doing post-grads and and trying to half marathons and all sorts of things so I was always really great at setting goals and achieving them and I did great at those spaces but it was actually coming from a space of fear and I'm not good enough and quite destructive so I knew I really had to shift in achieving in self-love so that I was coming from a space of I am good enough and just really uh, coming from a space of, I suppose it's that being energy rather than the doing energy. And and now I do a lot of work around the, the masculine and the feminine as well. And I was very much in my egoic masculine of forcing through life, charging through life. And I really had to stop and, and take a step back and, and learn how to be feminine really as well and learn how to receive and, and, and learn how to be kind and um, loving to myself. And I suppose the biggest thing, Amber, was that I did extremely well. I achieved um, first class honours in that postgrad that you talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. And that was when it was a big, it was huge. I was, because I did it with a broken wrist and everything else going on. And I was one of the youngest and I was also... Um, one of the only nurses in this class of doctors and social workers and physios and, you know, amazing academics Mm -hmm. and little old me (laughs) won and I got tough. And so it was an amazing, it was just blew me out of the water. I was like, wow, how did I even do that? But the greatest lesson for me was, wow, look what I can achieve when I'm mean and hard to myself. Imagine what I could achieve if I was really nice and kind and loving to myself. So it was a really good lesson. And that's when I decided to change my, my way of being. And what a powerful question that is, you know, even for myself or just anyone, like asking yourself in the mirror, like what if you were actually kind and compassionate and loving to yourself? How other successful and great can you be? You know, you can become even more. So it's such a powerful question. Mm, Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you for being so open and honest, Melanie. Really appreciate that first. Like, I think that's huge that you're open and talk about that. So thank you so much. You I'm mentioned sure. earlier about your workshops. Do you mind just sharing with us exactly what do you, is it the workshops on receiving? Is that correct? Yeah, I've actually uh, called it seven steps for permission to receive. So it's actually working through a formula. Uh, and then I teach this formula so that then people can go away and keep revisiting that formula to learn how to receive in a, from a deeper space. And what it's about really is learning how to receive from self because we're so good at being busy, you know, looking after everybody else, but not ourselves. And so then we end up being in that stress response. Um, It's called the sympathetic nervous system. So we end up being in that for far too long than we need to. And that's when we get the products of the inflammation because we have too much adrenaline and cortisol in our body. So I'm very science-based, obviously with, with the nursing and the degrees and things that I've done, but I have this spiritual sort of component as well. So I sort of combine the two. Uh, for me, I really needed to understand the science of the brain, the body, why we work the way we do, um, and also the different responses, which is the parasympathetic, which is the relaxation response, and the sympathetic nervous system. So what I teach really is how to get into this parasympathetic nervous system. So this is the space where your body feels relaxed and that's where you can really achieve to the optimum, where you don't get sick anymore, you don't have pain, you don't and also what that does is is opens up what's called the genius brain as well. So we have both the left and the right hand um, lobes of our brain open so that then we have a higher sense of intuition as well. Um, And life just starts to work out a whole lot easier. (laughs) So that's what I'm really about for people is that life doesn't, and I look, life is incredibly hard for me. Um, And that was because I was hard. I was hard on myself. But as I've really lightened up and learned how to access this this relaxation response in my body, uh, it's like you become in alignment. The synchronicities start to line up. 
Um, but you know, and it's a, and I work at it every day. I have my set routine and I'm always working on really getting more and more into my parasympathetic nervous system. And as you said earlier, like I had really bad um, anxiety and depression growing up. And so I was, my body was just in sympathetic overdrive all the time. And I know in society now it's become our normal, like a lot of my clients and things I come and they're not even aware that they're stressed because it just becomes, you know, so much of their normal. So I'm really about, yeah, teaching how to, to get back into that space um, because we have to teach our bodies because it's, it's we've, we've lost that ability um, to relax it now um, because of, well, so many things in society and we're actually too evolved in, <laughs> in technology and things and our brain actually can't cope with it, but we try to make it. Um, so it's just about really getting back to the simplicities of life and, and in this receiving workshop as well, I also... Um, I talk a lot about limiting belief systems and how they're created in the brain and then the emotions, um, but also how to connect with that fun part of ourselves again, because I'm all about the inner child and the fun and the joy, uh, because we've actually forgotten how to have fun. And that's my number one measure of success now is, is I just get up every day and I'm just like, oh, I just want to have fun today. And that's, that's all I really worry about now. Um, so it's just um, giving people permission to have fun, be in the inner child, you know, be silly uh, and just really start to enjoy life because, you know, that's what I believe that we're here for. Yeah, absolutely. You had so many nuggets in there, Melanie. I'm even just like I was just jotting them down really quickly there so I don't forget anything. Um, one thing that you mentioned about was giving yourself permission. That's a huge, huge conversation and how have you act like what would be if someone says to you oh well okay i can just say yep yeah, amber it's time to receive let's receive now and it can be like hairy fairy however right but then there's the other point where you actually genuinely say no this is time this is it how do you recommend specifically people to give themselves permission to receive look i've got to be honest for me it was i was sick of the pain it was, I just couldn't do it anymore. Like, I can feel emotional about it now. It's just like I had to, you know, I was just putting myself, I was making life so damn hard. Um, just, I had to, um, I suppose, build my limiting belief system of not being good enough. Um, and, but I'm grateful now for all those, the pain, because if it wasn't for the pain, I never would have surrendered and, and, and gone down another road. But I think they, you know, they say that you either, you move pretty much you move away from pain we don't tend to move towards pleasure we don't even know what that is so uh i find look most people come to me because they are at a pain point and they're realizing that they cannot go on doing life the way that they are or they're very entrepreneurial as well and they know because that i suppose that's where i am now because i move towards pleasure now because i've totally rewired my whole body that I'm addicted to love emotions now rather than the fear emotions that I used to be addicted to. But, you know, as an entrepreneur now, you know that if you do the same things, you get the same results. So we're always about doing things differently, stepping out of our comfort zone. So I suppose that's why I sort of ended up working with entrepreneurs now because they know that to go next level, they've got to um, actually access this, this parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation response so that they can be in their brilliance and their genius mind. Um, but, yeah, look, initially for me it was all about the pain and it is for, for a lot of my clients. Um, and that's not a bad thing either. You know, the pain's not bad because if we didn't have that, well, we wouldn't, it wouldn't drive us to, to do things differently. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the two things we lead for, right? Pain or pleasure. Mm. That, that's yeah, that's, yes. When you mentioned, and I'm, I'm going to stutter on it, I'm going to stutter of exactly how to say, is it the parasympathetic system? You mentioned that you actually do daily things to get yourself into that state. Would you mind sharing a couple examples of what you do? to get yourself love in that to state. love to this is what i love to talk about the most <laughs> thank you um yeah so i you know and it's been a work in progress you just sort of get to one and then then you master that and then just keep adding on it adding on it adding on it uh so this is sort of how my day pans out now is i do what's called a magic my magic morning uh this sort of came from a result of listening to some mel robbins work she's she's from the from america and I've always been a meditator anyway for a long time because of my anxiety levels. I, I, I had to learn how to. I was too stubborn to take medication for it, so uh, which was, you know, it was a good thing. But I, I learned to meditate. So I now meditate every morning for 15 minutes. Um, meditation for me is not 
it's more about deep breathing because when we take deep breaths, what happens is we stretch the vagus nerve, which is down in the bottom of our stomach. And then that sends a message up to our brain to access this parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm all about just deep breathing. Uh, and it's so beautiful because we give our body oxygen. You know, it's our number one requirement. So just taking some nice deep breaths, just sitting there, um, is profound because, we, we, you know, oxygen going to our brain, you've got better, better capacity to make decisions. So that's um, – and then what I do after my meditation, like if I'm going to exercise like I did this morning, I went to spin class at 6, so then um, I come home, shower, and then I meditate for 15 minutes. Then after that, I set my intentions for the day, so what I want to – you know, what I want to achieve today. But for me, it's about a feeling because I'm, I'm addicted to feelings now more than – objects or getting this or getting that so my intention is you know I suppose to be more loving today or to be fun or but to live in gratitude so that's sort of examples then I set my why so why do I want to do that and that helps me sort of really connect to my heart as well and then the biggest thing I've started over the last few months which has been profound for me is a quick time so I tell myself in the morning what time I'm going to quit at night when I'm going to stop working, put the computer down because I found I could, I can certainly be a bit of a workaholic. Um, so now I set that quick time and that's really made a massive difference for me. Uh, then throughout the day, I'm always going, my, I just constantly in gratitude, constantly in gratitude because my brain uh, is very wired to self doubt, <laughs> to, um, to, I suppose, it can easily look at what's not working out. So I'm always training it to, to really look in gratitude. I also uh, have implemented a, I take deep breaths when I go to the toilet. I just take a few deep breaths. That centers me as well again. So I'm accessing the parasympathetic nervous system again throughout the day. Uh, then at night, I do a gratitude journal, um, which is, I just keep things really simple. So I just write one line about what I'm grateful for from myself for the day and then I write three times how that makes me feel and that just helps me open up to feeling the feminine energy, uh, being in the heart uh, and that's the last thing I do before I go to bed um, and then what that, that has a profound effect. I explain this in my workshop because then we teach our body to secrete those types of emotions, the love, the joy, the bliss, the peace and because our subconscious is very active overnight. Um, so if you're going to bed in worry and fear, then they drain your energy a lot, producing those emotions. So then you can actually wake up in the morning feeling absolutely exhausted, like you haven't even had a sleep. So when you learn to do this, it puts your brain in a, I suppose, a higher state so that you wake up more energised in the morning, um, which I find is yeah, made a big difference. And then I have my – so that's sort of a day, but then I have my non – I call them non-negotiables, and I teach my clients non-negotiables. So I have a bath once a week. That's one of my non-negotiables. That's a must. I take myself out for lunch as well, or I just like a bit of me time um, once a week. And then um, I like to go for a ride as well. I love my, um, my I'm a, I'm a cyclist, bike rider. So that's a big thing for me and just helps me, um, you know, feel, feel relaxed as well. And, um, and, yeah, and in that parasympathetic nervous system. That was amazing, Melanie. Thank you so much. I definitely will be shifting and taking on some of those daily habits as well to, to get into that more. And I love how you even said, like, you did your deep breathings in the bathroom because – you know, you have to just attach them to something you're going to do anyways. You know, I do Kegels while brushing teeth. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. On the floor. Um, yes. But it's exactly that stuff that you're going to do anyways. It's like just integrate it straight in and just make that the cue. Oh, I just thought of one thing I forgot, which yeah, is really sure. powerful as well that I'd love your listeners to hear. Yeah. Uh, is mirror work. So as soon as I get up in the morning, that's the first thing I do is I look in the mirror and I tell myself I love myself massive and just a side note i've actually started mirror work with ava oh beautiful yeah we started it actually a week and a half ago and we're loving it because yeah we do morning workouts together too and i've actually put it in the mirror now and so we've put that in because uh, it's right next to our vision board and you know i take her through all of that so yeah it's pretty powerful oh that's beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it makes a huge difference mirror work is massive yeah well it builds your limbic system in your brain which is your emotional center Brilliant. Didn't even know that side. So mm, well, everything I do, there's a reason behind it. <laughs> I love the science. I'm like, because I need, I need to know. I'm like, why would I do this? Is this going to help me 
is this going to be useful for me or not? So I need to understand why. Yeah, and then I'm perfect. Thinking, yeah. No, it's great. And I think that goes into our other element called ball up, which is also a bounce or a ruck, but it's a restart of play after the ball has been whistled dead by the umpire. And this we could all have a choice to restart our lives at any particular point in time. So for any of the listeners that might think, oh, well, that sounds really great, or I could do that, just press that reset button. So how would you help someone who've never received? How can they start? and begin to restart where they're at at this particular point in time? Well, I do what's called mini habits. So our brain is wired to heart and fear and does not like change. Our subconscious mind likes everything to be exactly the same. Uh, so it's about finding a mini habit for you and doing it for 30 days. Um, what I teach is you actually make just a makeshift little calendar with days one, two, three, four, et cetera, up to 30, and you just tick it off every night. Uh, and it's just doing so something really simple. So my last workshop, the majority of them loved the gratitude idea. So they all have made that their mini habit for the next 30 days is just doing that, that gratitude um, journal at night. Um, another thing I have is uh, magic, my magic uh, meditation, which is a five-minute meditation, uh, where they'll just do that for, for for thirty days. So it's just finding for some people, like another one of my workshops, one of the guys, like this work was quite new to him. He's actually quite a successful businessman, and he really related to the deep breathing. And he's like, "Well, I don't feel ready that I can actually." Because some people can't even sit there for five minutes, you know, because it's so on the go and so in stress response. So for him, he's just going to do some deep breathing in the shower. So that's huge for him. So it's just it's just making it really simple and achievable. And then you tick off your thing every night and just go, wow. And then before you know it, it's like, wow, I'm actually getting somewhere. And then you start to feel the effects of that because our – and you've got to put in some anchor points as well because our subconscious will try to sabotage it. And then the thoughts come in, oh, this is a waste of time. Why am I even doing this? Rah, rah, rah. So you just have to, um, yeah, just make it really simple. And then you achieve it and then you can start building on it then. Then you can go to the next mini habit. Um, and I say this because I, being the overachiever that I used to be, I used to set myself up. For, I'd just make it so hard. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'll do five things at once. Uh, and it's crazy. It puts your body <laughs> um, into a state of shock. Yeah, so it's just absolutely. finding yeah one thing that works for you and doing it for 30 days. Yeah, it's brilliant. And we can always find something like how you mentioned about that gentleman, how he was going in the shower. You know, one of my cues is at a red light. And that's where I take my deep mm, breath. Yeah, because we're going to hit them anyways while we're driving. And even if it's only one deep breath, at least I got a deep breath in there. And that just keeps me calm, especially with a newborn and when she's crying. Like I actually don't get that anxiety rise up, but it's probably because I'm deep breathing at the red lights and throughout the day and when she's napping like I make time for it and I actually wake up every day at four o'clock in the morning so that I can have an hour to myself before I even give to her you know oh that's so beautiful but you have to make it work and it's just a yeah, you do. You forever do. and then once you get that mini habit done for 30 days it's like it's your life force you need that it's your necessity mm. it's your blood. so you'll make it happen no matter what subconsciously Yes, so, yeah. yes, because you start to move towards pleasure rather than pain. Exactly, exactly. It's great that you have all the scientists in the background and you know all that part. I'm just like, oh, I just liked it because, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, I don't yes. know what's going on scientifically behind it. So it's brilliant. Yeah, well, there are massive benefits. Mm, absolutely. Massive benefits. Well, let's go into boil over because a boil over in the footy game is an unexpected upset in which a team not expected to win by any stretch of the imagination pulls off a victory. Now, we as individuals can actually pull off this victory strategically and show the other half or the other team that we are here to win. How have you helped people gain confidence and feel comfortable in their own sense of self to know that no matter what? they do have that inner strength to approach life's challenges. Well, I'm really about helping people find the gift in a situation because I, I, my belief system is that we've attracted everything for our highest and our best. That's what I say. So I help reframe people and, and see why whatever challenges that they've had is how it's been a gift to them. Um, and also I'm huge on learning 
non-judgment. So I, I learned that you know, really, really well in my in the palliative care space as well, uh, because we're all different, we're all unique, and I really learnt so much about emotions as well, and that our judgments and our emotions, the the shame, the hate, the anger, they're all very equally as powerful. So. When I start to work with people around that, because the only fears that people mostly have is, is fear of judgment and fear of being, you know, ridiculed or shamed or whatever. So when you can hold a safe space for people to realise that their life has been perfect, then um, it really puts them in a strong and empowering place to then start to take responsibility uh, and, and start to then come from a space of courage and they talk about below the line thinking and above the line thinking. So then you start to really rewire your brain to start to look for the positives in every situation. And then that starts to feed your body physiologically with a different emotion, which is love base, which then makes you just feel a whole lot better and more energized anyway. But when we're always looking at the negatives um, and being, I suppose, in that victim state, then we, we're we very disempowered. Um, and then that we, we feed off that and it makes us feel heavy, you know, and exhausted and tired. So, um, yeah, it's just about finding the gift. And, and I really look at that in my everyday now, like something might be a bit chaotic or, um, and I just look, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, I wonder why I've created this. And just start to then be the observer of the situation rather than really going in, in it um, so that then I can shift it and, and see the positive in it and then my energy just goes up. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks so much, Melanie, for sharing that. Would you be able, just quickly before we wrap up today's game, um, would you be able to share even just a technique of how to get out of that non-judgmental, um, what would you call it, behavior or Feeling? Well, it's being aware and not, and what I say is don't judge the judging. So I'm actually doing a snooze, a snooze challenge, a five week snooze challenge at the moment. Um, it's just a free one that I've just put together. Uh, and the first week is all about looking at where you judge yourself. Because as soon as you become aware of where you judge yourself, you actually change the neuro pathways in your brain because they're not automatic anymore. Because most of the time we're so busy, we're just asleep and we don't even realize that we're judging ourselves. So when you become aware of stuff, it's fantastic. And I say, well, that's great. And don't judge the judging because every time you realize, oh, well, you've been cruel or mean or hard to yourself or whatever, well, then every time you become aware of it, then you actually come to a space where you have choice. And you go, okay, well, I can see my patternings here. Actually, next time I choose to react differently and just be kind to myself. Um, so it's, yeah, just starting to notice your judgments and then not judging that as well. And that starts to really change the, the, the brain pathways. Fantastic. And that five-week challenge, it's, it's already started or could our listeners jump on board? Will it be automatic? Like you can just... Well, they could, certainly, because then I can always send them the, the previous two weeks. Okay. And yeah, I mean, they can maybe even, um, oh, we could just work it out. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, yeah. See where you're at. Cause I'm, I'm sure that people will want to get in touch with you and we'll, we'll ask that shortly. Cause I want to find out if there's anything else you want to add to today's game before we get into how can people work with you and get in touch and, you know, jump on board any of your challenges that you might have or go to your workshop. Um, so before that, I guess I'll just pause ourselves on that one because I got too excited. Um, mm. is, is there anything else that you want to add from today's game before we go into how can people get in touch with you? Well, I suppose I just, yeah, the one thing that I'd like to say is that um, just to look at where we put pressure on ourselves, really, um, because that was a biggest game changer I suppose for me that I thought that I had so much stress in my life but I realized I actually created all of it as well so it's just looking at those different areas of life and going oh, okay where can I take the pressure off uh, and one thing that I share as well is that I say well you know no one's going to die because that was my reality I worked in an area where, where people died all the time and I'm so grateful for that because it's just given me a whole new awareness of life that 
I now have this ability to take the pressure off myself because I go, well, you know, there's nothing to really worry about here. No one's going to die. Um, so then it puts me in a space of coming, you know, from a more empowered place than, than, than a, such a stressed, a stressed out place. So yeah, that's all I want to just say is just, um, yeah, just look at where you can t- start to take the pressure off yourself a bit so you can um, be free to, to enjoy life a bit more. Lovely ending. I definitely love it. Um, just, I know we haven't talked about your book, but everything that you've talked about today, is that what's in your book or is your book on a different topic? Yeah, pretty much. And I have a lot of, so I, I talk a lot, I, I like to be vulnerable. So I, I talk about a lot more in depth about my story and how I got to be where I am today. Cause I was a very opposite person really to who I am now. And uh, yeah, a lot of, there's a lot of good science in there as well to explain why I meditate, you know, what, all sorts of different things. Uh, and then at the end of each chapter, there's uh, three things that you can do to access the parasympathetic nervous system as well. Um, so it's a really, and it's a book that I wrote to my past self. What would have I wanted to know when I was growing up and going through, you know, really challenging times. Mm. Um, so it's just my little book of wisdom, really. Brilliant. Okay. So Melly, please tell us how can people get in touch with you and anything that you share, I'll add into the show notes as well. So first off, what's the name of your book and where can they buy it from? So it's Success on Purpose. We're here for a good time, not a long time. Uh, you can buy it through my website, which is at www.successonpurpose.net.au. Um, I do have it in some bookshops as well, um, and it's on Amazon and everything. Um, but that's probably the easiest way is just to go to my um, – and then you can get – uh, an actual hard copy on my website um, and then you can also contact me through there as well there's also a contact um, and there's a few uh, pdfs and different things and free downloadables um, there's meditation um, and then yeah there's a contact um, where you can just put in your name and a little message and and then that will go through to my to my email and then I can just email back and we can get in contact that'd be great brilliant and what about is your workshops on there or even say that they want to take a part in the five-week challenge or another challenge you might have off of Facebook or wherever you're doing it can they connect with you anyways that way for your work? Yeah, yeah. but my workshops, all of the dates, and I also have meetup groups as well for entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're all on my events page on my website um, and also on my Facebook. Facebook is Success on Purpose. And also there's Melanie Taylor's, but with an O, um, where it has other information and people can get and contact me via messenger messenger there as well and instagram too which is success on purpose perfect and also your meetups are in port melbourne so she's in australia as well so just know for locations are you planning on going around australia doing a tour or well i'm already yeah it's already sort of coming a lot quicker than i expected but um i'm actually going up to brisbane in september i'm doing a half day workshop up there and a meetup um, on the 19th of September is the meetup and the half days on the Monday the 24th Okay, so we should just keep an eye on your website. That will be posted onto your events and I'm sure you'll be promoting it on Facebook as well if they follow you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Melanie. We'll put all the links in the show notes, but thank you so much for coming on today's show. It's been absolutely brilliant. I've learned a ton. I'm sure our audience has as well. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Amber. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. No problem. And thank you so much, listeners, for listening to today's episode. We truly appreciate and love you all. If you've enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, or follow us on your chosen platform. And of course, share it with anyone who could see benefiting from it. For those who are brand new listening to our show, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Podbean, and Spotify. And we'll be releasing our episodes every Monday. So look forward to having you tune in then and have a wonderful week. Bye, guys.